What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once for all. Delivered to the Saints, and on this Tuesday, in the fifth and final week of Lent, we're continuing on through our Gospel of Mark. We've got a really great writing from Johann Sebastian Bach, and of course, we're continuing our ongoing catechesis, this time continuing on with the Office of the Keys. Stick around. <laughs> So as we've been working through the Gospel of Mark uh, for this Lenten devotion series, Faith of Our Fathers, looking at this particular Gospel and then what the Church, current and ancient, has had to say, and of course introducing some catechesis or instruction into the basics of the Christian faith, we've been noticing how it's all centered on Jesus, and now we have Jesus on trial and the center of attention. And so we're going to watch uh, and see how Jesus behaves uh, with all of the accusations thrown at him. So we're going to begin uh, Mark chapter 14, verse 53. And they led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. And again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garment and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him, and to cover his face, and strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, you also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Interesting. I, I, I read these... Um, in preparation and I guess I never noticed this until I was reading it just now we have two trials here uh, Jesus and Peter and <laughs> the accusations against Jesus are false they, they can't well he's the sinless son of God they can't come up with anything against him but when Jesus is questioned and speaks the truth then he is condemned when Peter uh, is questioned and he lies, he goes free. Uh, so Peter, it's a, a common thing in Christianity today to want to read oneself into the Bible. And if there were a place where that were appropriate, and I say if, I think it would be here, but I don't think we would read ourselves as, as Jesus in this text. We're certainly not. The, the, the devil, the world, they certainly have accusations to make against us, and they're true. 
Uh, we can't claim perfection. We certainly cl can't claim to be the son of God. We are sons and, and daughters of the Most High by adoption, yes, but we can't claim that authority to sit down at the right hand of God, but we are Peter, aren't we? It, it, Peter, on, at the time, not knowing what he's facing, not knowing if he's going to be on trial next, lies his butt off and denies Jesus. And it's very common, if not directly, outright, to lie and to deny Jesus, and then to certainly deny him by thought, word, and deed, uh, by that which we do and that which we, we don't do. So we see in this Jesus condemned for speaking the truth and Peter going free for speaking a lie. And what we're going to see later in the Gospels, after the resurrection, is not just a one or a two, but a threefold restoration of Peter. Three times Peter denied Christ, and three times after he rises from the dead, Jesus restores Peter. And so there is restoration and redemption won for us by the suffering and death Jesus chooses to go to in our place. And Peter denied Christ, and so do we. And there's redemption in Jesus shed blood for that. Now our writing comes to us from Johann Sebastian Bach. Ah, uh, now is my Jesus gone. Where is then thy friend now departed? O oh, thou fairest of all the women, is it granted can I see him? Where hath he thy friend gone away? Ah, uh, my lamb in tiger's clutches. Ah, uh, where is my Jesus gone? We will with thee now go and seek him. Ah, uh, what shall I say to my spirit when it doth in anguish ask me, Ah, uh, where is my Jesus gone? The world hath judged me with deceit, with lying and with false conceit, with nets and snares in secret. Lord, me regard in this distress. Guard me from false deceptions. My Jesus keeps amidst false lies his silence to show us by example that his dear mercy's full intention for us to suffer now inclines in order that within such pain we should resemble him in persecution keep our silence. Forbear, though deceiving tongues may sting me, though I suffer innocent, mocking scorn, ah, then may the Lord above give thy guiltless heart its vengeance. Who hath thee thus so smitten, my health and thee tormented, so evilly abused? Thou art indeed no sinner like us, our descendants, or evil deeds thou knowest not. Have mercy, Lord, my God, because of this my weeping. Look thou here, heart and eyes now weep for thee bitterly. Though I now have thee forsaken, I will once again return, for thy Son hath reconciled us through his agony and death. I deny no whit my guilt, but thy mercy and thy grace are much greater than the failings which I ever find within me. Stunning. So much better than the, the praise anthems of pop Christianity, the, the writings of Johann Sebastian Bach, and the, the quality of music, too. Um, so our Lenten Catechesis continues on. We've done the Ten Commandments. We've done the Apostles' Creed. We've done the Lord's Prayer. We've done baptism. Now we're on, again, to the Office of the Keys, and this is a great gift that Christ has bestowed upon the Church that I think oftentimes goes overlooked. So a few readings from a document called the Small Called Articles. We will now return to the Gospel, which does not give us counsel and aid against sin in only one way. God is super abundantly generous in his grace, first through the spoken word by which the forgiveness of sins is preached in the whole world, Luke 24, 45 through 47. This is the particular office of the gospel, second through baptism, third through the sacrament of the altar, fourth through the power of the keys. Also, through the mutual conversation and consolation of brethren, where two or three are gathered, Matthew 18.20, and other such verses, especially Romans 1.12. The keys are an office and power given by Christ to the church for binding and loosing sin, Matthew 16.19. This applies not only to gross and well-known sins, but also the subtle. 
hidden sins that are known only to God, as it is written, who can discern his errors, Psalm 19.12. And St. Paul himself complains that with my flesh I serve the law of sin, Romans 7.25. It is no, it is not in our power to judge which, how great, and how many the sins are. This belongs to God alone. As it is written, for not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you, Psalm 143.2. Paul says, I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. 1 Corinthians 4.4 4. Interesting, in these times where we're worshiping online and people are justifying it with the phrase, wherever two or three are gathered, <laughs> Matthew 18.20, where two or three are gathered, is clearly, clearly indicated as always having been understood to be about church discipline. So, binding and loosing belongs by Christ's authority to the church. And the pastor is called to hear your confession and to pronounce Christ's forgiveness to you. This is the gift that Christ gives to his church in John 20, 20, and 21, the office of the keys. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, the temple of your body was destroyed on the cross and three days later raised from the dead and exalted to the right hand of the Father. Visit us now with this same body, that we may not deny that we know you, but in faith hear in our ears your life-giving voice and receiving on our lips your very body and blood to strengthen us in times of temptation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Until next time, may God richly bless you, and the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.